We're just awaiting the final whistle. It's quite a victory for Kilkenny. There was never any doubt. The final whistle, they beat Waterford by 23 points. The management doing a terrific job. I suppose coming into this year, we had achieved two in a row. And if anything, that was, that was going to be a hindrance for the coming year. So in the back of everyone's mind, we knew we had a chance of uh, getting into the history books. Kenny have just done the three in a row. Yeah, well, I suppose there was a huge focus about the three in a row, and essentially everybody speaking about Kenny's chances were saying that the three in a row pressure was there, and would that get to us or whatever it might be. Well, one of the greatest teams, if not the greatest, I'll leave that to hurling historians elsewhere. To think that here we are now in 2008 with, with three All-Irelands, you know, one on the spin, it's very, hard to, it's very hard to believe how quick and how fast it has all gone by. I suppose it's a special feeling, you know, to win one or learn is a, is a great, great occasion. To win two is even better and to win three is absolutely just dreamland. So from that point of view, I suppose, um, for the players themselves, from my own personal point of view, I, I don't know if it has sunk in yet. Maybe it's only when we probably retire and we look back in, on these years as one of the greatest three years of the Kenny Hurling ever, you know. We have great players in Kilkenny, but you need to be able to gel them all together. Um, it's the same with, with Chelsea in the, in the soccer there a few years ago. Uh, Roman Abramovich could buy any player in the world with, with the money he had, but they needed a good manager, and they got that with Jose Mourinho. So um, I suppose there's kind of similarities there with, with Kilkenny, um, uh, Brian Cody and the management. Um, they have great players, but, but you, need, you need to be able to gel them together. And Brian Cody there with the county chairman. Ned Quinn saluting yet another score. I suppose when I came into the job first, back in 1999, it was certainly um, would have been regarded then that was never again probably would have two all irons again be won back to back. Jackie Turrell, the captain in 2006, another All Ireland medal winner in 2007. The referee is calling for the ball and it's all over. And Kilkenny have retained their crown. They have won their 30th All-Ireland and Brian Cody's team, a team of champions, the All-Ireland hurling champions with Henry Shefflin, the captain. Well, well, Henry got a series. Henry got, you know, the cruelest of all injuries for all, all sports people in the cruise ship in last year's All-Ireland final when he was captaining the team. And... You just don't know if something happens. You get a little tip in your leg and next thing your cruise ligament is gone and you're out for eight months. I was happy that, you know, you know, the surgeon's job, they told me that it would be fine and it would be better than ever, so that's the way it was, so that, that was the relief, I suppose. And for Henry to come back after such a serious injury, like, and show absolutely no signs of it whatsoever, I mean, you've seen the first match, even the Offaly match there, I mean, a very physical match from the world goal. Shefflin coming across looking for his first score and putting it over the bar. What a comeback by Henry Shefflin. Some other managers probably would have, you know, not led me that day against Offaly, but Brian wanted to get him in there and get, get that first game under the belt. Up towards Jerhelian, who seems to have stepped out towards the 40. Brian Hogan, his marker, beat him to it. Coming in here is Derek Malloy. And Malloy lets fly, and that's over the bar. Oh. Well, we looked at Offaly really as, as really a serious opposition and we put huge preparation and huge focus into the Offaly match. And uh, the challenge that day in Port Leach was very, very serious and we were put to the pin of our collar for the whole first half. Brian Carroll in there to challenge Jackie Terrell. Succeeds. Now trying to turn him. Good work by Carroll. Oh, that is a superb score by Brian Carroll. Personally, I found the Offaly match this year um, that was a very, very tough match. I found the start of that match very, you know, the first half was just absolutely hell for leather. Like, I mean, the ball was flying around and, you know, we don't complain about the physical side of it. We were being hit from all angles. The forwards have come away off the field and that's not good for Offaly. Certainly somebody has to stay in around the square. And we got a goal before half time that kind of set us on the road. Goal! Calabari drives it to the back of the net! The opening goal of the game! I'll tell you, at half time of that match, it was, you know, it was great to get into the dressing and get a bit of a breather because, you know, it was a shocking tough game. And I, I mean, I hear about people saying we can peak in August and we can peak for summer. If we try peaking in August, we won't be. We will certainly be going on the qualifier route because we wouldn't get over either Wexford or Offaly if we weren't ready for them. It's an 18-point victory 
by Kilkenny. They were the masters. Brian Cody knows it. They're on their way to another Leinster final. If we go into the Leinster Championship anyway, off, any way off, you know, particularly the first match this year, like that was as tough a match as I can recall as playing. From a physical point of view, I remember there was hits coming in, you were out of breath, there was another hit coming in, and it was the same for the start of the Wexford match. Welch, he's played everywhere and played for distinction everywhere. He's robbed this time by Willie Doran. Midfielder David Redmond this time having a fire, having a shot, and he fires it over the bar. All the way in, great take in there with difficulty. Again, trying to make a better angle for himself. Back towards PJ Nolan it comes. Uh, we knew at half time it wasn't a, a nice place to be now because we knew we hadn't performed and uh, I think we just said to ourselves that look, everyone has to go and look after their own position. We were probably running around like, a bit like headless chickens in the first half. So in the second half, we just went out and played a base and very simple. And uh, again, we got the score. He's getting the ball forward, down into the corner towards Eddie Brennan. Trying to steal a march in here. Power is available. Back inside towards Owen Larkin. Larkin trying to step away from trouble, looking for a free. Back in it comes. Dangerous moment in there for the Wexford backs. And it's in the back of the net. Eddie Brennan. Eddie Brennan. goals against Wexford this year were really, really special. Everybody talks about the second goal where he got it and placed it into the top corner. He says he did anyway. I got a lot of stick over that, and the boys, you know, everyone asking, did you mean it? Did you mean it? Good ball, great delivery inside towards Richie Power. Nice kind of ball for a forward. That's a good ball forward here. An opportunity for another score for Derek Link. Scored in the first half. Little hand pass outside here. Coming on to it, Eddie Brennan. Oh, another one for Eddie Brennan. Back of the net. All of a sudden, it's Kilkenny's game. I remember being so afraid hitting it, and you can't imagine that the amount of thought that goes through your head in a split second when, you know, when I saw the gap and that Damon Fitzhenry was a long way. I said, if I put it somewhere over there, he's not going to get across to it. And but I certainly didn't mean to put it. You know, off the crossbar and in, you know, that wasn't deliberate anyway, but uh, I suppose to pick off a goal from 25 yards, 30, 30 yards out off Damon Fitzhenry, was, well, that was a special thing because um, I tell you, he's not an easy man to beat. I actually think his first goal against Wexford this year was absolutely wonderful piece of skill. I had no idea how he did it on the sideline watching it. We needed a goal. I don't know how he got it in. I had to look at the big screen to see what he did. And he's just the economy of movement and his quick thinking and his sharpness was a serious, serious goal. Fast Eddie by name and Fast Eddie by nature, you know, it's a, he's just a phenomenal player and he's so dangerous and, uh, you know, everyone says about his speed, which he does have, but he's such, you know, he's such strength and, and, and guile and uh, he's a brilliant finisher. It's a 19-point victory for Kilkenny. All of the damage essentially happening in the second half. Goal after goal, beating Damien Fitzhenry. Kilkenny are in the semi-finals. They've won the Leinster Championship for the 64th time. It's Kilkenny, five goals and 21 points. Wexford, 17 points. After we played Leinster final, um, we needed to, to get 100% focused again. So we just went away on bonding, bonding weekends uh, down to Wexford and just kind of taught us out of the box for a while. Um, to get our heads right for the next game. We spent a lot of time uh, as a panel together and uh, we'd be great friends, you know. Uh, we'd obviously be slagging and uh, horsing around with each other. The whole panel is, is, is built on spirit, is built on respect, is built on trust in each other and there is absolute unity between every aspect of the whole thing. Like, the spirit is absolute and it's, it's, it's there and it's steadfast and, and, and it stands to us in a major way. If there was one fella I could depend on my life on the panel, um, God. Um. They're such lovely fellas. I don't know which one I'd pick. Uh, maybe Eddie, because he's a guard. He might look after his best. It depends on your life to win a ball or whatever. I suppose the likes of Tommy there, because you know, people probably, you know, they look at Tommy Welsh and, and he's small in stature, but oh, uh, the zoom, it's, you know, the, the fight that's in him is unbelievable, like, you know, and uh, I suppose it's like, Anton, if there was ever a ball dropping into the square at the end of a match and you were hanging on by a point, 
you know, he's the one lad that you could probably back that will come out with it no matter what. I think the respect is there within the panel for each of the, each member of the panel and for everybody else involved as well. Um, selectors, physical trainers, medics, um, county board, clubs, the whole county. Everyone gets on with everyone and uh, that's what you need. You need everyone pulling together and obviously if you have 33 lads pu pushing the one way, you know, you're going to get there that bit quicker than a couple of lads pulling against you. Brian Corcoran, the man who came back from exile. He was out for three years, but he's come back and looks like he's about to win another all Ireland medal. He's the hero! Brian Corcoran has put over his second point. Is he glad he came back now, Ger? It's all over, and Corcoran, the champions! The all Ireland final of 2004 comes to an end. And it's won by Cork. In 2004, maybe we, we thought too far ahead. Wexford uh, beat us in the semi-final, Leinster semi-final. So uh, that meant we had to go through the back door, which took us toll uh, by the end of the year. Cork beat us in the, in the 2004 All-Ireland. So um, that, was, that was my first, first taste of an All-Ireland final at senior levels. Uh, it wasn't good, but um, I suppose they say you have to, to lose one to win one. Or, Maybe lose one to win three, I don't know. <laughs> we had been in the same situation obviously in 2004 and quite a lot of the players would have experienced it as well. And you know, I really think the way it was, was that some players, it was real motivation for some players, players maybe who had failed in 2004 to win it. In the lead up to the Cork game, we trained very hard, but training is different to they were off playing matches, so we didn't really know what was going to take place on the day. Other players don't think like that. Other players just, you know, the championship is on. Let's get in there and try and win as much as we possibly can. I think the team as a whole were very nervous because they didn't know what to expect. The game itself against Cork, again, first 20 minutes, you know, was absolutely magnificent. I think the ball was flying left, right and centre, up and down the field, and, you know, you're really catching your breath. But we, we were hurling well, Cork were hurling well as well, but we were hurling well and we were moving well, so we felt good about ourselves and we knew that we, we, we had a good chance of winning this game, you know. We'll expect Nocton to do a little bit of roaming. Great sense of anticipation. The match everybody has wanted to see for weeks now in hurling. The moment I thought that really changed the temperature for us, or changed the temperature in my mind anyway, was uh, the first half of the Cork match. Tommy Welch was in his uh, usual a uh, dogged mood and he, he just, uh, I don't know, he shoved one of the Cork players over the line and just went for him, you know, so when you see one of your own players uh, being so aggressive and so fired up for a match, it, it really kicks home uh, in your own mind and that, that rubs off all the rest of the players. And I think Tommy laid down the marker there, I mean, a bit of shenanigans started on the sideline and, you know, you know, I think he did himself and whoever, I think Sha, Sha and Brian Hogan and Jason, you know, they showed that we weren't going to be pushed around for a day. Big one down towards Martin Comerford against Dermot O'Sullivan. That's a good catch by Dermot O'Sullivan. Off got a great score. One of their trademark scores, I think Dermot O'Sullivan came out and won the ball and threw it out to Sean Og. And Sean Og went here and passed me, left me for dead, and gave it to Jerry O'Connor. And I think Jerry turned around and put it over the bar, and the roar went up, and it was just frightening, you know. That's magical. It was really cork, cork, cork at this stage. Look at the number of players in there in the centre, and it's Owen Larkin emerging from that group. It's a dangerous moment, there's a goal chance, and it's buried! And it's Owen Larkin who gets the game's first goal after 29 minutes. I think that score just kind of told us that we were there, and as I said, we were hurling well, and we were going to try and drive it on from here. What an absolutely brilliant finish this is. As the final whistle goes, it's Kilkenny who are en route to the All-Ireland final. Yet again, the dream of winning three in a row for this marvellous team is well and truly still in place. A great match to win in the end because, I mean, Cork are one team that we have absolutely massive, massive respect for. I mean, Cork are two years, two, for two years there, they, won, they were on line for the three in a row. Like, and, and, and everyone saw where the level the Cork were at, so you know, we said we wanted to get up there and compete with them. And I think that's the challenge that you always want to beat the best. To be fair, I think teams, Everton has become more modern and training has become highly scientific and everyone's diet and everyone's so fit. Uh, in years gone by, I suppose we used to come back after the winter and we could have a bit of a few pounds extra on our belts. We had a meeting in Kieran's College in, or in Spring Hill in 2006 
And uh, I remember Cha at the time uh, being the, the world of wisdom that he is and maturity. He wanted us all to go off the beer for the 11 weeks that was going to take us to win the championship. And uh, I think Noel Hickey objected to it. <laughs> Thank God. Watford have bet us in the last couple of years in playing him in the league. So we were very cautious of it, and we knew if Watford performed on the day, that they'd have a very, very good chance of winning it. It's a massive occasion, I suppose, particularly for kids, but for, for a lot of probably fellas even that heard the Watford over the years, I mean, they probably hadn't seen an all Ireland final and, and had, hadn't known what it was like for the, the county to be in an all Ireland final. Well, I suppose Watford have been one of the top teams in the country for the past number of years, you know, they've come so close to getting to the final over the past five, six years probably, you know, um, back in 2004 we, we, we had a great game with them in all Ireland semi-final and, you know, they're always on everybody's lips to the team that if they could get to the final, they'd win the final. Yeah, we were very nervous about Waterford because I suppose in years gone by, you know, Waterford might have lost the semi-final when they got to that stage and to be fair, they'd be the first to say themselves they hadn't played brilliantly to get to the semi-final. But when it came to the semi-final, when it came to the crunch, you know, they had a bit of difference. We realised as players that, look, Watford are on a mission this year and uh, they were very, very focused and that's why they won that semi-final and they were very focused coming up to the final. The flip side of that is that you have to worry about yourself and worry about your own performance and uh, we kind of, you know, we knew we had to be in the top for a game to do that and I think we were. And Kilkenny, people forget the pressure on Kilkenny to win three All-Irelands in a row, to overtake Cork with the most All-Irelands of all time. And there was great expectation all over the place about Watford's chances and that. But all we could do was just go ahead and prepare and get ourselves ready as, as, as normal and, you know, physically and mentally ready the whole way. Just look at the setting. The waiting is over. Waterford fans have waited 45 years. They waited 49 years to get their hands on the McCarthy Cup. Will today be their day? They are rank outsiders. The hottest of favourites, Kilkenny, bidding for three in a row. Barry Kelly about to get the match underway in the 120th All-Ireland Hurling Final. I think the point I got in the All-Ireland Final this year was probably one of my you know, favourite scores because uh, if it had went mile wide, uh, they'd been roaring at me, uh, what are you at, Henry? It's Henry Shefflin, and he's getting some mileage there against Kevin Moran, and Moran will really have to tie him up big time. I was probably 70, 80 yards out, and I just hit it, and I knew the minute I hit it, it was gone, you know, it was just, it was just so pure. It's probably the first nail in water was coffin. expected the game to go that way either um, you know not in our wildest dreams do we think that that was going to happen they'd want to be some plan some master plan to take the title from Kilkenny at this early stage I think even at half time I don't know it was kind of a funny feeling in the dressing room like I don't think I think a lot of us even probably didn't realize the score was what it was you know Kilkenny lead in the All-Ireland final by 216 to five points for Waterford we were so focused, even at half time, I didn't realise how far we were ahead. I think we were 17 points ahead or something, but I didn't even realise that. And the plan was just to take over the second half, the first 10 minutes, and just to make sure. We got great scores, and I uh, sure the way the game went was, was like a dream for us, really, you know. ideal ball coming into it that day, we couldn't but score like, you know. It's on Larkin! No mistake! 47 minutes of the game gone and Larkin gets his goal. Owen Larkin got an outstanding goal but that gave us that bit of breathing space. And we went on then and we, and we came into the game more and more and, you know, we turned in a very, very good performance that day without a shadow of a doubt. I was in Waterford one day about two weeks before the All-Ireland this old Waterford man comes up to me and he, he said, uh, is, there, is there any chance we could kidnap you? And uh, I said, uh, no problem, work away. I said, 
Um, if you kidnap me, I don't, I don't think it'll make, make much of a difference because there's someone else there to take my place. Out to DJ Reid again, and he's having a field day over the bar. Two shots, two points for the number 28. We drove it on after half time, and I think then the last 15 minutes we knew, and you know, we got some fabulous scores. And at that stage, you were able to kind of soak up the atmosphere, and you knew what was going to happen. and. Uh, it was great, great to be out in the field and uh, to be part of that, you know. So three goals and 30 for Brian Cody's team. One thirteen for Waterford. We're just awaiting the final whistle. It's quite a victory for Kilkenny. There was never any doubt. The final whistle, they beat Waterford by 23 points. The management doing a terrific job. And the final whistle went, I suppose, was ecstatic. Um, We've been very lucky down here in Kilkenny to, to experience that feeling before, but uh, it was something something different, something special, you know. The most complete performance in an All-Ireland final that I think I have ever seen. Unfortunately, we know what it's like to be on the other side of the coin, and, and I'm sure, you know, the Waterford lads are absolutely devastated because they're better than that. By well, one of the greatest teams, if not the greatest, I'll leave that to hurling historians elsewhere. It's supposed to, to, be, to be dubbed uh, the best team this century is um, is, uh, it's pretty cool, you know, but the um, thing is, we're, we're there to be knocked next year. It's three in a row. Well, who's to say it won't be four in a row in 12 months' time? For a county like Kenny, who, as I said, you know, we live, breathe and, and sleep hurling down here, and that's, that's the be-all and end-all, and they, they will probably never see, you know, a three-in-a-row team again. Please God, they will, but it, it might be a long, long time again. So I think for them to see, they take such pride and they take you know, it takes over so much of their life that to be able to see, you know, they were there supporting Kenny and winning three in a row, it's a, it's a marvellous thing for, for all the people in Kenny and obviously for us the players, it's a, absolutely special. You know, as it turned out, obviously, it went perfectly for us, you know, it was the best performance, I suppose, this team has put in, you know. To turn around for me in 20 years' time and say that I was part of that Kenny team that won the three in a row, you know, that... Uh, yeah, I played with Tommy Welch, I played with Henry Shefflin, I played with Derek Ling, Mick Kavanagh, Jackie. You know, the list is, is endless there. I mean, right down along to, to every one of the 34. And, you know, to say that you were part of that is, is just going to be very, very special in years to come and, and something that I suppose you live with for the rest of your life. In 1934, it couldn't be done. In 1976, it couldn't be done. In 1984, it couldn't be done.